What? Izzy, what are you doing? Look. Most unique dresser. What's wrong with that? Unique? What does that mean? How should I know? Ugh, forget it. I need a girl opinion. We became interested in the health of the reefs. If the reefs are gone, the fish are going to be gone. We began to ask questions. I wonder if we'll see more fish here. And it became this full-on investigation. Next on Psy Girls. It's going to be really cool. Funding for Psy Girls is provided by the following. The National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Math and science are everywhere. They're the building blocks of tomorrow. That's why ExxonMobil sponsors programs to get kids excited about math, science, engineering, and technology. So one day, they may become the scientists of the future. said you were down here. What? Izzy, what are you doing? <laughs> Class superlatives came out today. Did you see them? No, but whatever they said you were, it isn't worth hiding out in your dryer for the next two years. I'm not hiding. I'm trying to figure it out. Look. Most unique dresser. So, what's wrong with that? Unique? What does that mean, unique? Unique good, unique bad? How am I supposed to know? Hmm. Good question. Hey, look! I'm in here! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most likely to embarrass himself on the casting special for American Idol? Whoa! They like me! They really like me, Is. Uh, Jake, focus. The question is, do they like the way I dress? How should I know? Ugh, forget it. I need a girl opinion. A side girl opinion. See ya! Ladies! I have a fashion emergency! Hmm. Next. Who? Colored fish? Colored clothes? Hmm. I wonder. Oh my god, I've never been up here before. My name is Meg. I'm 14 years old. I've dove like way on the other side of the island. I'm an older sister. My younger sister's also here. I've never scuba dived with her before, so it could be different. My name is Elle, and I'm 13 years old. We are going into Avalon on Tablina Island. My sister and I, we went to camp this year. We both became interested in the health of the reefs around Toyon Bay on Catalina Island. We began to ask questions about, like, are the reefs healthy? How can we learn more? You definitely should care about protecting the reefs because they're a source of food for the fish, protection, shelter, oxygen, everything we pretty much need and the fish need. If the reefs are gone, the fish are going to be gone. And then when the fish are gone, the ocean is going to die away. Los Angeles is right there, and Catalina is right here. Yeah, so we started here, and we took a boat out to here. And if you actually look really carefully, right there is Cherry Cove. Toyon Bay. Toyon Bay, I mean. We going to play Frisbee? Yeah. Awesome. Not very good. Might go in the water. I had to pull out. I'd say I'm not the perfect older sister. Here we go long. Throw it to me! Throw it to me! Having a scuba sister is a lot of fun because since I'm fairly new to it, she can tell me like all the tricks and like what to do and what not to do. She doesn't really enjoy it if I try to teach her things. She likes to learn on her own. I have not been trying to mentor her on how to scuba dive. It yeah. is the hardest rock wall on this rock wall. Some of the things I want to experience on my own, and she always wants to tell me what to do. And TT, do not go higher than the first one without a harness, please. It's funny. Not like in a bad way, 
feel like she wants to help me. Like, she's a good sister. I could think of worse sisters. I definitely could. I doubt she'll ever be the perfect little sister. There's no such thing. But she's a pretty good little sister. <laughs> hey, what's the Garibaldi scientific name? Hips, Pops, Rubicundus. Nice try. And somebody who works at camp recommended meeting Colleen for Reef Check. I love trying to pronounce all of these scientific names. Hi, ladies. Hey. Hi, I'm Colleen from Reef Check. Hi, Hi. I'm Meg. Hi, I'm Elle. Nice to meet you. Your instructor told me that you wanted to learn a little more about reefs. Yeah. yeah. Well. By meeting her, it kind of opened up a whole door to learning more and comparing, and it just became this full-on investigation that started off with, are the reefs healthy? So like you guys like count the fish and to see how healthy it is? We do, we go out, we count fish, we count invertebrates, we count seaweed, and we look at the bottom and we see what's going on out there. I work with volunteer divers and we call them citizen scientists and they go out with us to help us collect this data because the five of us that work at ReefCheck wouldn't possibly be able to go out and get all of this information ourselves um, all yeah. throughout the state of California. So we so need is that a lot what of we're going to be doing? So what we can do is um, try to put together something for um, teenagers that might be a little um, easier for us to do in a couple days. And we can have you guys work as citizen scientists as well. And we can try to figure out what our reefs are doing here on Catalina Island. That'd be so okay. much fun. Citizen scientist Izzy ready for duty. I want to see how much you guys know about some of the species we have around here. Quiz us. I'm going to do a quick quiz. Ladies, what is this fish here? Black smack. I'm gonna pick this one. Kelp bass. And this is one of my favorites as well. Garibaldi. Now, do you know what these um, is that a black female sheephead? Yes, it yeah. is a female sheephead. Do you know the difference between a male and a female? A male, yeah, a male has the black and red stripes. All sheephead are born female, and when they get to be about eight years old or so, um, and they need to start thinking about reproducing, uh, the two biggest females in the group will kind of come up towards to each other and do this big open mouth contest to figure out who's gonna be the bigger one, and uh, whoever wins that contest ends up turning into a male. What tends to be living on some of our rocky reefs? Out Plants here? or animals? Well, all well, of it, right? There's a lot of kelp forests, and there's sea urchins that feed on the kelp and stuff like that. There are a bunch of fish. There's all of these animals. All these. Okay, great, so it's not just one thing we're looking at. We're not looking at, say, just kelp, or just leopard sharks, or things like that. It's a lot of things kind of living and kind of working together exactly. in one ecosystem. Yeah. What we can try to do maybe is look at a couple different reefs um, that maybe have different amounts of humans on them to kind of see if there's a difference between them and see what's going on. See out which there. one's healthier, which one's not. Okay. And an easy way to do that is to pick what we call indicator species. If we pick a few of those that kind of have um, a key part of this ecosystem, what we can do is count those numbers and compare them um, between two different sites. Meg and I are going to be looking at eight indicator species. So each one was chosen for a special reason, either what it eats or if it's commercially harvested or if it just plays an important role in the ecosystem. We are in the invertebrate lab. This is a sea cucumber and it's kind of scared because I touched it, so it's swollen up. If you kiss a sea cucumber, you get seven, seven years, years of good yeah. luck. All right, let's see it later. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very nice, very nice. An invertebrate is a sea animal that does not have any bones, so most important is it does not have a spine. I like invertebrates because they're fun. Oh, Yo, feels chill, you. Dude, chill. It feels you. Oh yeah, good one, good one. You got it, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Grab it. Nice one. So are there any animals here that are indicator species? So one of them that I was thinking of was the sea urchin. Whoa, spiky. Now these guys have five kind of teeth on the underside of their body and that's how they eat. If they're eating a lot of the seaweed, these might be good to know. Also we've got our sea cucumber. I was thinking that might be a good thing for us to look at as well. well because they're so popular, they're everywhere. A couple of other animals over here. It's actually called a gorgonian. Now these guys, if you look really closely at what looks like a plant, do you see how there's like lots of little flower looking things on these guys? Yeah. The gorgonian has lots of little things that are like anemones, they're called polyps. And so on one um, gorgonian, there could be thousands of polyps living together on this. So many. It looks like it's covered in snow. Wow, sea urchins, cucumbers, indicator species, got it. I'm sure you know what this stuff is. Seaweed. Kelp. What might this be important for? Well, food. yeah, it's home. gonna be a great food source. Shelter. Shelter. Yeah, for like the kelp fish, it's like an easy way to hide from predators. Exactly. Um, anything else? 
oxygen. Oxygen, right? So it's really important for that as well. So those are kind of my three big reasons why I think help so important out there in the ocean. It's also in a lot of products that we use that you guys probably are aware of. Toothpaste. And? Ice cream. Ice cream. Toothpaste and ice cream? Seriously? I think we should have some way to record information underwater. So I have these data slates that we can use um, underwater and there's one for each of you. We talked about four species of fish that we can use as indicator organisms. Mm -hmm. We talked about three species of inverts or invertebrates and one species of seaweed. So I kind of made up this little um, data sheet that we can use. Mm -hmm. And what what will happen is this has been printed on this really cool underwater paper. What you would do is then count how many of each of these organisms you see. Okay. So, you know, I saw seven blacksmith, I saw two Garibaldi, whatever. And uh, we wanna make sure that we have some watches so we can record our, in, our starting and ending times. The indicator species that we were looking for were the blacksmith, Garibaldi, kelp, calico bass, sheephead, male and female, gorgonian, sea urchin, cucumber, and the giant kelp. So we can lay down a measuring tape on the bottom and use that as our guide and we swim along that tape and look on either side of that line and see what we're seeing as we go. And um, you can dive down or swim at the surface. Are you gonna use like an actual like line? Like I have a, a measuring tape. Okay. Uh, we'll go out and we'll do several replications of this. So we're gonna do this over and over instead of just doing it once so we can really get a good idea of what's going on out there. And then we'll come back, we'll tally it up and we'll, we'll compare all of our numbers and see what we find. Okay, yeah, cool. Let's meet Elle. Hi, my name is Elle. I want to be a veterinarian for big animals, actually. I have two horses, Blackie and Slurpee, one dog, Gemma, one leopard, Gecko, Finn, five chickens, a bunny named Monty, uh, two cats, Ashy and Smudge. Bye, Elle. Bye. We're heading out to a dive spot. We are going to investigate how many, like the population and whether it's a healthy reef or a non-healthy reef. Woohoo! Here we go! Hold on tight! Maybe because I've been scuba diving longer than her, so I have more dives under my belt. And the little things that my sister can do, like, we're sisters, little things, like, tick us off. We're like, ah! It could work, it could work peaceably, or it could work World War III. So who knows? <laughs> what place is this? Uh, this is called Lion's Head. This is actually a great spot. Um, we're gonna be mostly out of the wind. Um, we should be protected from the surge as well, so we won't be moving back and forth in the water as much, which is gonna be really nice for us. Yeah. Yeah. It's not protected. Not a lot of divers come here, but it does get fished a lot. Hmm. So this is the unprotected reef. So I'll lay the transect down. Um, you guys will each do your one count, um, and then we'll move it and do the same thing in a slightly different spot and then a third okay. spot. So, so we're one, doing three total trials, just one, each one is in a different area? Yes, and each person will count each line once. Okay. All right. There are wetsuit babies. <laughs> it's got all of our stuff. And it makes it look even more like a baby if you put the hood in like that. <laughs> You're gonna be cold in that. Three, one, two, three. How do I look? <laughs> all right, let's get that, that booty on. Oh, yeah. I'm not getting Tell cold. Tell me you got two left booties. Are you kidding me? You gotta Kitty? do it. You gotta do it. <laughs> you got two left booties. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I've heard of two left feet and dancing, but <laughs> snorkeling? Got it. Yes. Wow, that feels weird. Instead of being side by side, we're gonna go end to end like this, All just right. like we discussed. And if you have any problems, let me know. What are our signals if we're having an issue? Okay. okay. And waving if we're in okay. trouble. Great. That sounds good. When I was little, I used to think that being a scientist was wearing a lab coat and with the safety goggles and mixing chemicals. But then there's also the kind of scientist that Colleen is. You get to go scuba diving and you get to study fish and there's so many different types of sciences that people can study. Who's gonna go first on our first one? I will go first. <laughs> Maybe I said it, you just Maybe raised your hand, it. I win. Maggie will go first on the first one, you'll go first on the second one. Okay, I'm starting. Okay, we'll go ahead and start. I'm ready. Set, go. We tried the transect dive method. And with the transect, you have a line that you're following. And a meter on either side was our kind of boundary to see if any fish or invertebrates or any of our indicator species went into that boundary. And if it did, then we would mark it down. It was fun because once you got, once you did the transect method, 
you kind of get into like a zone and you totally space out and you just focus on what the task is at hand. I'm trying to find a unique fish like me. Um, there were definitely different, many different types of kelp on this dive. It was harder to distinguish the certain kind of kelp that we're going, we're going for the giant kelp. I definitely go with the motion of swaying back and forth. I guess in a way you could see more doing that because you're not like focused on fighting the current. I saw a couple kelp bass, a bunch of Garibaldi, and a bunch of the uh, kelp. It's really pretty. Um, let's go ahead and tally up our data sheets, like put totals before we forget. Those boat rides are always probably some of my favorite times of camp, just because you are so burnt out from scuba diving or snorkeling. And you're on this boat and you're just seeing the entire island. So that's my favorite part. Uh, tomorrow we are going to the protected reef at the Avalon Dive Park to see if anything changes from unprotected to protected. Now this is still pretty early in the morning so it's not that crowded yet. Um, it is the summer here on Catalina on a weekend and so my prediction is we're going to have probably about 100 divers here by the mid-afternoon. It drops off pretty quick, so by the time you get to the outer edge of the buoys, I'd say it's about 80 feet deep. Wow. Yeah. It's my first time at the dive park. I'm very excited. We're all tired, but we're having fun. I like 20 times checked. Make sure I had different booties this time. It's been a long couple of days, but we're having fun collecting all the data. The beach is that away. Where is the meter in your body? So for me, and for me, it's from my fingertips to right around here. I'm not gonna do free hair. I'm gonna tie my hair back today. So it's kind of getting in my way. Yesterday. Hey, now yeah, mine's longer. Good. Huh. So this is the protected reef. I wonder if we'll see more fish here. So we took our first transect dive data, and there's actually a lot more blacksmiths. We saw some blacksmith. And pretty much it was the same amount Garibaldi and giant kelp. We saw a few kelp bass. Not many invertebrates though, but that could change when we go scuba diving. I saw a few urchins when I dove down. I saw a ton of Garibaldi. I saw 17 Garibaldi. <laughs> I didn't really count how many blacksmiths, so I just said a big school of, it, of black kelp. Oh, okay. um, the actual transect dive took about three minutes. Oh, see, for me it was five. Yeah, see, mine was a little bit shorter than usual. I think I'd sped it up a little bit. Any reasons why I might have been speeding up? Um, the surge could be one thing. It was really surgy in one area, and like uh, the line was like moving back and forth, so that could have sped up, sped up our data. It was not as clear as it can be here. Usually here it's crystal clear, yeah. but it was a little hazy. Hi, I'm Meg. Hi, Meg. Blackie's the grumpy one. Sometimes I'm kind of the outsider of my family, though, just because they're all big horse people. I like the chickens the best. <laughs> they're my favorite. They're so entertaining. Like, But if you ever wear like bright red nail polish, they will like attack your hands. Uh, note to self. Don't wear red nail polish around chickens. Ah! I've been playing club soccer for five years. We live in the middle of nowhere, but I like it here. That's a plus. That's a big plus. Bye. All you wrote is big school. I almost have to know how much that is. I don't, I couldn't count them all. We are averaging up all of the fish that we saw. So we're gonna take all of our averages and put it into a chart to see the numbers of fish compared to a protected area versus an unprotected area. Now we're doing Garibaldi. 11, nine, 10, 17, 10. Kelp bass, four, one, two, we guys and divide everything by six. Uh, the six is because how many, that's how many I did three transect dives and she did three transect dives, so you add them all together because we're putting all of our data together. All right, next is giant kelp. Seven. Next is gorgonian. Zero. We already know. She said. Numbers. Zero. Zero. It's all zero. Zero plus zero plus Why? zero plus zero. Plus I think that zero. we worked pretty well together. There were definitely moments where it was like, okay, this is like too much of the little sister. Too much of the little sister. It's like little sister overload. Do you really need zero. to do this? <laughs> zero divided by six equals zero. zero. Oh, shocker there. <laughs> but then there's times where it's like, I'm having fun. 
Hey, Elle, look what I found. All right, awesome. We could use that, because the paper might have been a little small. So we have a very large dry erase board now. These scissors cut weird on the waterproof paper. Because our highest number for the averages is 11, let's only take it up to 15. And there's the kelp bass. Look at all these colors. Wow. Giant kelp is for Avalon. Yeah. Nine. Gorgonian Avalon. Zero. OK, Gorgonian, I mean, cucumber Avalon. Zero. Hey, ladies, how's it going? Hey, Colleen. What are you up to here? We made a chart, um, as you can see, a chart of all of the data that we've collected over the past few days with you. Oh, wow. Of all the fish and the invertebrates and all these indicator species. I've noticed that in all of our data, um, Avalon Dive Park, the green, has a lot more numbers than the yeah. lion's head has. Hmm. I wonder if that's because the dive park is protected. Well, we figured out since these are the two that are fish. Yes. <laughs> there are definitely a lower amount of them because, oh. well, I know that the dive park is protected. Okay. But that doesn't mean that when they're out of the dive park, when they get fish, it doesn't really give them a chance to come to the dive park. <laughs> Right, so they're not always staying in the dive park. They yeah. can move in and out of the yes. dive park. Okay, right, that's a great observation. Also, we talked about the weather oh. and how that could have been a large factor of why did we did not see many of these invertebrates, the urchins, gorgonians, cucumbers, um, because it was so surgy. And also at the Avalon Dive Park, there were many other divers that could have kicked up the bottom. Yeah. That's a good So that could have, that could have, like, hurt the visibility some. Do you know what urchins primarily eat? Kelp, kelp, giant kelp. Okay, great. So these guys are pretty much sitting on the bottom. They're never going to be swimming around in the water at all. They're sitting on the bottom and they're eating seaweed. And most of the time, they're just going to eat drift seaweed that's kind of broken off and is drifting by and they can just eat it that way. Another indicator species is the California sheephead. Any guesses what these guys might eat? Kelp Nope. Urchins? Yeah, they're going to eat urchins. When the sheephead get to be pretty big, they can actually eat urchins. They also eat other hard things like um, crabs and things like that. So if we fish out a lot of our sheephead, if we reduce the numbers of sheephead, what's going to happen to our other populations? The urchin, urchin is going to grow numerously. Yeah. And then the, it's going to eat all the giant kelp, and then the giant kelp is going to go down, and then any animal that eats giant kelp is going to die because they don't have any food. And then... Plus, giant kelp also gives shelter yeah. to many animals. So if the California sheephead, it's kind of like a domino effect. Whatever. So it's all interrelated. A domino yeah. effect. If we take one, um, even just one piece of this giant web out of, out of order, then we're going to have uh, implications down the line. Okay, so ladies, now that we have all of your data put together, um, we can go ahead and enter it in the Reef Check database. We'll enter our Avalon data first. Um, in Lion's Head, there were not as many indicator species as there were in Avalon. We saw greater amount of indicator species in Avalon. Let's, Let's scuba. scuba. Okay. All right, this is the BC. It's mm -hmm. buoyancy compensator. You can, like, it, you can inflate it and deflate it to make you float, like bob on the surface, or when you deflate it, it the weight of the tank like makes you sink in your weight belt, makes you sink down. And I think we'll have a much greater chance of seeing sea cucumbers, urchins, and gorgonians because we have the opportunity to go to the bottom and move things around and actually search for them. Getting ready for scuba diving, putting on the wetsuit, putting on your BC, everything, or even snorkeling, just putting on the wetsuit is pretty much the most challenging part of the entire dive. <laughs> just because it, you definitely work up a sweat. Fins on ragged, not your snorkel. Just okay. makes it a little easier. And then you'll kind of wait for a wave. You'll pop out one at a time, swim out to me. Do you okay? And then the next one will go. Okay. Whoever's going first. I want to see some of the gorgonians and urchins and cucumbers because we were not able to see those while snorkeling. When you go scuba diving, you forget about how cold you are or how tired you are because you're so focused on, oh my God, look what's around me. It's so amazing. And you get like up close and personal with these animals and plants. When we went down, we definitely saw some urchins, some gorgonians. We, we saw even a lot saw of things. some sheephead. Yeah. 
just the way like the beauty is presented to you while scuba diving, it can get your attention and you want to learn more about it. I mean, if marine biology was not as like beautiful like work as it was, then I doubt so many people would be interested in it. I think that's gonna be cool because we're actually like helping people in doing actual data that's gonna help people and be on an official website to see how our reefs are doing and how our fish are doing. And I think it's gonna be really cool. Cool as a cucumber. A sea cucumber, that is. So you went through the latest teen magazines and found three indicator clothing items? Yep, just like you said to. So if you have all of them, I think it's safe to say you're a fashion do. All right, I'm ready. Okay, do you have a striped scarf? Uh, I'm pretty sure I do. <clears throat> yep, uh-huh, here. Sweet. Okie dokie, how about plaid shorts? Oh, totally. <clears throat> Got them. Fine, here comes the tough one, though. Polka dotted sneakers. Ha, ta-da, got them. Seems to me, if you've got the indicator fashion items, you're good to go. Yay! Huh, you know, together these would make a fab outfit. Yeah, I don't think wearing them all together is quite what the fashionistas had in mind. You know, Jake, I don't think I care. Whoa! That's, uh, unique. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And I don't even care what that means. To me, it's a good thing. Ta-da! I've been calling her TT since she was born. I've been called Megala. Peggy, Peggy, putting in a pie. <laughs> Just going on TV. <laughs> TT is loco, annoying. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'll, Friendly. I'll put sweet in. Or something nice. Meg is... Nice and sweet in one word. Nui. Oh, need a roo. <laughs> Plenty of time. Vito. Stop laughing. <laughs> Sloppy. <laughs> Don't hug me now. Ow. We decided to build a basking turtle platform. We wanted to learn what we could do about the population. I'm holding a snapping turtle. <laughs> <laughs> This week at archaeology camp, we're trying to find out about the Fremont people. Climbing. I can't wait to start trying to find these artifacts. I thought it was nothing until I started digging. We're going to set up our own mini wind farm. We were just really awestruck at the size of these huge wind turbines. Wind, wind power. power. Yeah. yeah. Funding for Sci Girls is provided by the following. The National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Math, science, and curious young minds. They're our future. That's why ExxonMobil and former astronaut Sally Ride created the Sally Ride Science Academy to help teachers inspire our students so they may become the scientists and engineers of tomorrow. Hey there. Hi. The SciGirls website is off the hook. You can set up a profile, find new friends, create a page for your science project, watch SciGirls videos, and have fun. So come on, be a SciGirl on pbskidsgo.org. See you there. Bye.